Uh, so my name is Abdi Jajua. I just can you please tell us a bit about how you got into business? What moves you to do in your current role? Okay, thank you. That's a that's a really good question. So I got into business. I'd say I was probably exposed to it ever since I was a young girl. So most of my uh, childhood, my I lived with my family members, both my uncle and my dad, who were both entrepreneurs themselves. Um, I studied it because I was exposed to that through my O levels, A levels at university. So it's kind of been something I've been a part of pretty much since I can remember. So studying it at a at a kind of university level, and then actually putting it into practice by going and working for a consultancy. We're just all part and parcel of being involved in this world of business and most importantly, knowing how business runs so that you can actually be successful as an entrepreneur. Did you face any barriers in achieving your success? And if so, how did you overcome it? So I think when you're in involved in business or even when you're you know in the world of business as a, as an employee or however you're operating in that you're always going to have barriers to your success. I think that's a big part of how you learn. Um so I can't say that I had one specific moment. They've they've been there all through my career, all through my life where you come up against uh, circumstances or people or situations which literally are a barrier to your success. They're stopping you from either taking the next step up in your career or growing your business in a certain way. And I think the best advice I could give all of you on how you overcome that is really having a problem solving mindset. I think sometimes people get quite um, dejected when those sorts of situations come up in their life and I think if you have a mind frame which is always about trying to solve the problem in front of you rather than getting so um, absorbed in the emotion of how you're feeling you actually will find you're able to move past these sorts of hurdles and barriers much quicker so I think that's the best advice I could give all of you guys is have have a problem solving mindset and you'll find it will mentally prepare you much better to overcome all these hurdles. What one person has had most influence you on your career choices and why? <laughs> that, that's a very good question. I also think it's a tough one because I don't believe that there is one person who has specifically influenced me. I think that as you go through different phases in your life, whether it's where you guys are right now at school or through college or university, you're going to experience different people, whether that's your professors or your teachers or even people in the media or in pop culture who you guys will look up to and think, yeah, I like the way they're doing this or I'm you know, particularly impressed by how they do that. And they will all kind of shape and form how you develop as a person. So I wouldn't say there's one specific person, but then I also would be wrong if I didn't mention my parents, you know, like, like I'd said to you guys before, you know, my dad was an entrepreneur and that's something I was exposed to from the day I was born. So I, I actually didn't know that you could be anything other than an entrepreneur for a long time. So um, I think he was a very big influence in my life in that way, in sort of shaping where I ended up. But I think you will come across lots of people all through your life. And I think that's the beauty of, you know, growing up and having those experiences. What is your view on whether the business sector is representative and inclusive of all children and young people? My view is actually, I don't think it is representative of young people. And I'll tell you why. I feel that a business as it stands at the moment and how all of you can have an access point into either you know being employed or starting a business is not so straightforward and this is why it's you know valuable for me to do things like what I'm doing right now because I feel the system isn't set up to support uh, young people to be more involved and more aware and knowledgeable about what it what it means to be in that part of the industry but also how to get in there in the first place so um but i i think that you know platforms like these definitely help you guys as students really understand what is the pathway to do that so i absolutely think it doesn't fully represent young people in terms of uh, what sort of opportunities are there for you. But that said, I think there are lots of amazing people out there who are doing great things to change that. And, um, you know, I, I really look forward to 
you know, future where it's very straightforward, or at least there are opportunities for you guys at your age to be more involved in the process of shaping your career or shaping a business or shaping your ideas. So yeah, I, I feel it doesn't represent it at present, but it's getting better. What would you say are the biggest challenges to me with the inclusion of diversity in business and what can we do to overcome them? I think that the biggest challenge today is a lack of understanding on how you can, like you said, include everybody in this overall conversation and keep them involved. And I think in order to overcome that, I, I think all of us need to start understanding diversity in people a lot more. And that's not just about whether we choose to hire them or whether we choose to offer them a job. It's also about really looking at diversity as a as a resource in your business as to how how different thoughts and different ideas can contribute to you know more innovation or more growth in a business and it's really about helping business leaders understand how to do that and how to do that in a way that is um that that gives a very real perspective of the kind of world we live in and so for me i feel like the, there's a lot that needs to be done in that space, but these are the ways I would tackle it. You know, leadership really needs to understand how to approach the problem and in a way that actually contributes to the growth of both the people and the business as well. So uh, I think there's a long way to go, but I think we're doing great work there. Can you tell us any way you're working to improve diversity and inclusion in the future of business for young people today? There are actually many initiatives that I'm personally working on, which are working towards um, changing that narrative and perspective in business. So I think within the companies that I run, we have a very um, op like open-minded perspective to whoever is coming to our door to help us contribute to the growth of our business. So we, um, we, we actually have a perspective which is more like we're looking more for the talent of the person and less so specifically their background because we feel like everybody has something to contribute in a way. Um, we also don't recruit in a way which, which is specific to a role. We actually look at the person who's come to work with us and actually see how we can leverage their talent and really help that support our business. But um, in terms of other ways, like I said in my previous response, it's a, it's a lot about educating leaders. And I think for people like me, I'm in a great opportunity to work with a lot of leaders through my consultancy. So that's something that I also work towards regularly and helping them understand how policies or strategies that they're developing need to have this central tenant of diversity and inclusion, because that's really how you create more um, innovative and forward-thinking organizations. So that's one of the things that I'm personally doing, but I know that there are so many other people out there who are doing similar things where they're making sure that there are more women on boards of companies or there are more um, diverse boards themselves. So there, there is a lot of work happening in this space, but I, I can understand also from you know students' point of view how that's quite... Um, it's not very clear where the actions are being taken. So I think there's definitely work to do in that space and able, being able to communicate that as companies around what it is that they're doing to make sure that it's supporting diversity and inclusion in the future of business. Hi, my name is Hamza. What do you think are the best ways to empower a diverse group of young people into business? I think the best ways to do that are to really focus on education and opportunities. I think if if we can make sure that we're, as business leaders or people in this space, we're making sure that we're educating people like you through forums like this to constantly understand what it means to operate in that space, but at the same time, giving you all opportunities to be involved in some way. And, that, and when I say that, I don't necessarily mean go to university, get a degree, get a job. It could be an apprenticeship. It could just be work experience. There's so many other ways to help help you know young people especially get involved in the world of business and especially you know to make sure that that pool of people is diverse it represents you know what the world really looks like today it is about creating opportunities and it is about making sure that in those opportunities we're really shaping how you can shape yourself in the future so i think those are really the key components for me my question is 
what advice would you give to a young person who is considering a career in business? Get as much experience as you can. And most importantly, understand when you say business, what do you really mean by that? Because business is a little bit like saying, I want to take part in the Olympics, but not knowing which sport you want to be involved in. So it's a good it's a good thing to really understand, well, what part of business do you really enjoy? Or, you know, what part of it sparks your curiosity? Do you like design? Do you like marketing? Do you like doing the sales? Do you like talking to people? Do you like developing products? Um, do you prefer to like be in the background kind of operating everything? I think the more you understand the different areas of it, and then when you find something you love or you really enjoy to gain as much experience as you can, like I said, you know, you don't have to go to university, you can get apprenticeships, you can look for work experience. And actually doing a bit of that before you commit to university degree is actually a good idea because then you can go there with, you know, an, a real formulation in your head of what you want to learn. So I think, yeah, experience and really, you know, understand what it is about business that you're passionate about. Hello, my name is Ahmed and my question is, what are your biggest diversity and inclusion learnings from founding Quantum Global Consultancy Firm and the Legacy Business School? I think one of the biggest things I've learned from really my career so far is that uh, when you have a diverse team, you solve problems faster. And, you know, you probably hear me say that very often, but it's very true. I mean, if you think about how all of you in a room who are all sitting there would solve a problem together as a team, you all have a different way of, of solving that problem. You have a different approach to how you think about coming up with a solution. And I think it's the same approach when you're building a business. So one of the biggest things I've learned is that when you truly have diverse teams, which have really interesting backgrounds, who've come from different you know, frameworks or different parts of society, you actually create great teams that have the ability to really solve problems and you know, move the needle on certain issues or you know, whatever it is that your business is forming around. So I think that was my biggest takeaway. And it's probably the thing I strive for the most now is to really make sure that we have that good mix because that's really what helps us excel as a company. What issues have you noticed around diversity in your industry? So in, in my industry of consulting, I wouldn't, I think the only issue I would have said I've noticed is the uptake of how diversity is such an important strategy for businesses to apply. That's been really slow. But now if I look in the consulting world, it's, been, you know, it's a, it's a huge part of all big consultancy practices, strategies, and even big companies as well. And you can now see also medium to small sized enterprises are also starting to understand it better and really see how they can incorporate it into their business. So my only my only quib, if I had one, was that we didn't get to it quicker. And I just always think to myself, if we had, how how interesting some of the problems we've solved to date would have been solved at a better pace or whatever. So I'd say that's the only real issue I've seen so far. How do you think we can improve the diversity? I think for for us as as organizations, it's it's making sure we're learning more and implementing what we learn at a quicker pace. That's the most important piece for me. It's that as we learn how to adapt as organizations to make sure we're building teams in a manner that is diverse, inclusive, and serves our overall growth, we need to make sure that when we're learning those things, we're therefore implementing them faster because we don't want to wait another 10, 15 years for you know the whole world to realize how important this issue is and how important it is for you know growth of business, entrepreneurship, and economies. Uh, so obviously taking risks is very important for a business. So for young entrepreneurs who might not be comfortable taking these risks, what would you say to them to encourage them to take them? That's a really good question. And I think the best advice I would give on that front is every decision has a level of risk related to it, even if it's to do with business or not. So the best advice I could give young people is 
to really weigh up your choices before you make that decision. I mean, people, just to give you an insight, we we do this in business all the time. There are decisions that we'll make that will have a negative effect on certain things. You, you can never escape that. And it's just about knowing how you make sure you're managing that effectively. So, you know, before you make a decision, really weigh up the pros and cons, really understand what it is that you're getting yourself into. And do you have a plan B if things don't go well? That's your risk management strategy. So having a bit of thinking time and a bit of an approach on how you're going to do that is is the risk management in itself. And that will actually make you more confident about the decisions you're making because you're armored with more information and you're more aware of what you're getting yourself into. Why do you think business matters and why should students learn about business? I think business matters immensely because it touches every part of our lives. I mean, if you think about the moment you wake up, you pick up your phone, you brush your teeth, you eat your breakfast. I mean, all those things have come into your life or your home because of a business that's operating somewhere to make sure that happens. And so I think, you know, if if we consider all the topics we've been discussing around diversity, inclusion, making sure there's opportunity for young people, business is effectively shaping the world that all of you are going to live in. And so it's so important for, I think, all of you to really understand how that world works and how it's affecting you. Because if you're really passionate about changing this world that you see, knowing how to operate in the system that's creating it is the best way you're going to create change. So I think everybody should learn about business, even if even if it's at a basic level to understand how it affects you as a person. Thank you.